everybody welcome to day three of fasting and prayer 21 days of fasting and prayer they're going by quick if you haven't jumped in uh, make sure that you do now because god has so much uh, that he wants to do in our lives he's speaking to us he's already um, answering prayers i'm experiencing some breakthrough with god some good stuff and i hope that you are too i want to talk to you a little bit more about fasting and prayer and why we fast uh, but I want to just start off again with what are we doing? 21 days, setting apart time to fast and to pray. I'm going to invite you to aim for 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, you can eat after that. You can drink fluids during the day. A fast means not eating food for spiritual purposes. That's what we're doing. We're setting ourselves apart to the Lord uh, and not eating during that time. If you've never fasted before and you think that will kill me it, to fast for that long, this is what I want to challenge you to do. Start off by fasting one meal a day. Do that for this first week, and then let's step it up to two meals a day, and then go a full 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and maybe even take a couple days to do full days of fasting. Make sure you drink your fluids, uh, but don't eat during that time. So you might need to reschedule some things uh, as far as meetings, birthday parties, whatever it is that would cause you to um, give up on your fast. But nevertheless, set the, the time apart for God. He's going to show up. And also, um, when you're doing this here, when you, when you are taking the time, don't just fast, but make sure you pray. Because if, it's, if you're just not eating, you know, it could be a hunger strike. Well, that's not going to move heaven. It could be like a terrible diet plan, <laughs> and uh, that's not going to move heaven. You know, those things might have their value somewhere else. But that's not what we're after. We're after seeking the Lord as well during this time of prayer and fasting. And so I uh, want to walk through the word with you today a little bit more about why we fast. And one of the number one reasons that we do it is to set ourselves apart. It's a personal sanctity. In Psalm chapter 69, verse 10, David said, I humbled myself through fasting. So there is a humbling of the soul that happens when we fast. It lowers ourselves. It takes us into the right posture before the Lord to receive something. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they'll be comforted. And so there's something about fasting and praying that humbles us and it almost brings us to this place where we're aware of the brokenness maybe on the inside of us as well as around us. And it sets us up to respond to those things. Now, we don't fast and go around mourning, like, you know, looking like it to where our faces are, are all disheveled. And, you know, we talk about this here. Uh, we still need to wash our face, you know, do your hair, put on your makeup, whatever it is. Make sure you look good and you're full of joy on the inside. Uh, but there is something on the, uh, on the, in the heart that happens when we are fasting that there is the hum the humility, but there's also the recognition of when we see things that just aren't right and we respond to it in a certain way. Let's look at a little bit through the Old Testament about uh, scripture concerning fasting and the humility that's associated with that. Uh, because humility is so important. You know, when we hear about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, sometimes people just think about, oh, well, it, the place was so wicked because of the, the same sex activity going on or, or, you know, overpowering people. And that's why God destroyed them. But that's not actually why God destroyed Sodom. When you read in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 9, it says, behold, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her, sis, her daughters had pride. They had excess of food and prosperous ease, and then they didn't serve the poor. So it's interesting that, that the reason that God destroyed Sodom wasn't because of some of those wicked things that people uh, uh, speak about today. That was there. But the primary reasons, he says, they were full of pride. They had lifted themselves up. And then he, he mentions this excess of food. That sounds like America today. I mean, we are so... Uh, prosperous and there's so much abundance and sometimes in our abundance our heart can be lifted up to where we think we don't even need God and then he mentions your prosperous ease wow humbling ourselves through prayer and fasting addresses those issues in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2 and 3 
God's talking to the children of Israel about leading them through the wilderness. He's about to bring them into the promised land. He says this, You should remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, how he humbled you and let you hunger. He humbled you and let you hunger. He brought you to this place of hungering that was associated with humbling. And of course, in chapter 8, verses 11 through 14, Moses is saying, when you get into the promised land, uh, when you've eaten and you are full, don't let your heart be lifted up. Like, be careful lest you forget the Lord your God. And so there's something about when we are full, when we have everything we need, when our flesh's needs and desires are met, that it's easy to get our mind off of God. It's easy to forget about who provided for us in the first place. Fasting humbles the flesh and the soul, and it causes us to remember, God, everything I have is from you. I'm so thankful, God, for what you've done in my life. In the book of Ezra, here's another Old Testament passage that really lays the groundwork for why we fast. In Ezra chapter 21, Ezra said this, I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God. They knew that in order to have success from the hand of the Lord and in the endeavor they were going after, they needed to humble themselves before God. Humbling themselves means, God, I am acknowledging. I am acknowledging my dependence on you. I'm acknowledging that you are right and that you have uh, the ability to work this out and and you have plans and I'm going to surrender my own ideas, my own thoughts, my own strengths, and I'm going to lean into you. Well, what do we do besides just simply saying that to demonstrate that we humble ourselves through fasting and prayer? And so that's what he did. Fasting is a divine corrective to the pride of the human heart. It's a discipline of the body with a tendency to humble the soul. That's what uh, the book God's Chosen Fast tells us, that it is a discipline of the body with a tendency to humble the soul. So there might be something going on on the inside there uh, that you need to deal with. That's what we're going after during this time of fasting and prayer. We're definitely seeking the hand of God, the provision of God, answers from God, answers to prayer, power. We're seeking all of those things. We're seeking breakthrough. We're seeking, you know, things to align in, in favor. We're seeking all of that. But what we're really doing is we're setting apart uh, this time to seek the Lord, to seek the Lord. And God, whatever it is that you need to do in our life, bring, you know, do that. But I'll tell you, one of the things that he often does during our time of fasting and prayer is he'll he'll acknowledge stuff in our flesh that we need to deal with. Um, in the Old Testament, fasting was often associated with mourning. Of course, sometimes like when they would lose somebody, um, at, you know, during the funeral and for a season after that, they would fast as well and mourning and grieving that loss. But sometimes there was this mourning associated with recognition of hey man, there's some things out of alignment on the inside or there is sin that needs to be dealt with or there's there's a bondage or patterns that need to be broken free of. And so you see like in, in Ezra chapter 9 verse 5, when they, when they fasted, they actually tore their garments. I mean, their hearts were in this. It wasn't simply, hey, I'm fasting guys and I just want you to know that I'm not going to be on social media for the next 21 days. I think that is really noble of you. <laughs> I don't think it's a big of you. I don't think it's it's a big challenge. I mean, it might be for you and your flesh, but but come on, that is not like a, a rending of the heart. It's simply, oh, I'm turning off social media. <laughs> okay, God bless you. I don't know that that's going to bring the breakthrough that you're after, but I will say this. I will say, uh, though you're probably watching on this on some form of social media, do everything you can to turn off social media, to cut that stuff out and fill your heart and mind with the word of God. And probably a good practice of that is all the time. And if you are on social media, I would say uh, make sure that you are filling your heart and mind with the word of God through that as well. But fasting, uh, in the, you see this in the scripture that it's, it's often coupled with repentance. So when we humble ourselves 
and God starts to show us stuff on the inside of us, it's an opportunity to have a change of heart, a change of mind, and a change of direction. In 1 Samuel chapter one, or chapter 7, verse 6, it says this, that they gathered together at Mizpah. They drew water and they poured it out before the Lord and they fasted that day and they said there, we have sinned against the Lord. So what are they doing? They're fasting, but then they're acknowledging, God, we've sinned against you. We've sinned against you. And then in Nehemiah chapter, what, uh, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, it says, Now on the 24th day of this, of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with, together with fasting in sackcloth, and they stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. So during the fast, you're not only going to be seeking after the Lord and, you know, praying for big things and declaring things and seeing those things come to pass. But because you've humbled yourself, then you're going to recognize some uh, areas of your life that displeases God, maybe, that isn't in alignment with his will. And this is the time to confess that to him and repent of it. I've noticed this, that already in the, these three days, I've seen a lot of flesh uh, come out in people. <laughs> Some of these things that lead to disunity, to broken relationships. Uh, and it's, it's not even necessarily the devil doing all these things. It's sometimes, it's our flesh. Like we have stuff on the inside that needs to be dealt with. And fasting and prayer brings it to the surface. So I'd say this to you. Don't be surprised if during this time of fasting, you feel like you're under attack. Now, sometimes we feel like we're under attack and it isn't coming from the outside. It's coming from the inside and it's not really an attack on you. It's a, it's a revelation or a recognition of the garbage on the inside of you that needs to be dealt with. And, and you can't blame the devil for it. You've got to repent. You got to confess that to the Lord and get it out and say, God, uh, I acknowledge this before you. I, the way I've been talking or feeling or thinking or acting, and it's wrong. And Lord, I bring it to you right now. I confess it as sin. I ask you to forgive me. I receive forgiveness. Wash me. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. And you're free from it. You're done with it. You don't have to keep breaking and bringing it up or uh, feeling bad about it beyond that. As soon as you acknowledge it and your heart is humbled and mournful over it, like we, we should be mournful over our, any sin in our life because we're not called to sin. You're not supposed to sin. You don't have to sin. You could go the rest of your life from this day forward without ever sinning again. There is no requirement from God that you sin. The reason why we sin is because we yield to our flesh because we give into temptation, but we don't have to. God's calling us to victory. And so I'm praying for you and, and me that we would walk in more victory than ever before. Now, what is fasting? Fasting is a consecration to God. It's a setting ourselves apart to the Lord. Uh, Jesus did this. Jesus did this. Think about this. Jesus, the son of God who had never sinned, called by God to be, you know, to, to the ministry, to savior of the world, you know, put on this earth, God in the flesh. He gets baptized in water and filled with the Holy Spirit at about 30 years old. He had never done a miracle in those 30 years, never done any type of, of significant ministry, a power ministry. Uh, I'm sure he was encouraging people, loved people, probably prayed with people and all of those things, um, th that type of ministry. But the real ministry we know Jesus for, the miraculous mir uh, ministry, never did any of that until after he was baptized in water filled with the Holy Spirit, but then he was led out by the Spirit into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and he was tempted by the enemy and he overcame during that time of temptation, during that time of fasting. He had already received the Holy Spirit baptism, but it was after that that he returned in power. That's what Luke tells us. So he was filled with the Spirit, he was led by the Spirit, he was empowered by the Spirit. If we want to have the things that Jesus had in our lives, if we want to experience uh, what Jesus has for us, we need to do the things that Jesus did. If he needed to fast and be filled with the Spirit, of course, but if he needed to fast and pray, how much more do you and I need to fast? I mean, 
If I'm relying on my own strength and pressing in, uh, I'm going to get very limited results. If you want, if you want God-sized miracles in your life and breakthrough and victory, then maybe take the cue from Jesus here. The early, the early church did, and I, we mentioned this just yesterday. But, but uh, Paul and Barnabas, when they were set apart for the ministry that God had called them to, while praying and fasting. Now, all of this stems from I'm humbling myself. I am realigning through repentance and confession, and then that sets me up for direction. It sets me up to know what steps to take, which direction to go in, because I am uh, I'm listening, and I'm in a po- I'm in a, an environment, and, and I have a posture to receive from the Lord. Acts 13, 2 and 3 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Uh, so, so that's the environment where they got clarity and calling and direction. But they had consecrated themselves or they had set themselves apart to the Lord. Remember, one of the primary reasons that we fast and pray is, is to sanctify ourselves to the Lord. When we do that, God says, now I'm going to set you apart for the things I have for you. So you have set yourself apart for me. Now I'm going to set you apart for the things I have for you. And this was the pattern that they established as ministers. So when they went and ministered around in churches and then they started to appoint other leaders, Acts 14, 23 says, So when they had appointed elders in every church and they prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Think about that right there. They didn't go and just launch these ministries through strategy, through planning, through research, through demographic studies. That's not how they they did it. They didn't make the list of the pros and cons. They didn't make the list of just the strengths and weaknesses and threats and opportunities. What they did is they got before the Lord and they humbled themselves through prayer and fasting. I wonder how many of the things that we have started out on in our own good intentions, but our own strength, that we didn't have the resolve to carry through, nor did we have the power associated or the heavenly plans because we did it all in the natural. I've got to tell you, I've been part of so many different ministries, some of them that I'm leading, many of them I'm leading, and it was based on let's get together and create a strategy. And oftentimes it was based on what might have worked earlier. Sometimes what worked earlier worked because it was birthed out of fasting, but we took the, the process and the planning and we left out the fasting, the prayer, and the pressing into Jesus. And some of those things, they go okay because God is gracious and we do the best we can. But that's not how we're called to live. We, we, I'll tell you this, uh, when plans and purposes are birthed in times of fasting, there is a resolve to walk in victory and never give up during adversity. Now, now this is true for uh, a ministry. But every aspect of your life, because I know I'm not just talking to ministers, you know, people who are planning churches and ministries, but you have things you're going after in life. You have plans for 2024. You have dreams. And I think that I think it's good to to make plans and dream and, you know, create vision boards and all of those things. I think that can be helpful for you. But sometimes we lean on that and we miss this piece right here. How much more power, how much more victory, how much more momentum would we have if it wasn't started by, let me get out a piece of paper or get put it on the board. Instead, it was, God, I'm humbling myself before you. I'm going to set apart the next three days to completely cut out food, cut, com- cut out all these other influences in my life. I'm going to fill my uh, heart and mind with your word. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to thank you. I'm going to set my ear here. I'm going to lift up my ear to to hear what you have to say. And I'll tell you this, when you do that, sometimes you might hear from God something that you weren't you weren't expecting. So it's nice to set goals and ask God to bless it. But what about when you're just setting your attention and your focus on God and then he lets you in on what he wants you to do? That's exactly what happened to Isaiah 
in the early chapters when he's sitting there said, man, I was I was in the presence of the Lord and his glory filled the place. And and you see that he kind of he he gets there in God's presence and he overhears what God's heart is and desire. God is speaking. He says, who's going to go? Who, who, who can I send? And Isaiah, Isaiah steps up and he says, hey, here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. And Isaiah wasn't even, um, he wasn't asking God to send him before he went into prayer. He just happened to be in the presence of God and found out what's on God's heart. I think that when you set yourself apart to the Lord, you're going to find out what's on his heart. And then he is going to set you apart for that. And so I hope that encourages you there. If there's any area of your life that you're experiencing defeat, if there's a hunger in your soul for a deeper purifying, if there's uh, a desire for renewed uh, consecration, if there's a challenge that you're facing for a new task or a new season, and maybe you feel like you're you're ill-equipped for that, now is the time to set yourself apart through fasting and prayer. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you're bringing this to our attention. And this is not by accident that you call the whole body of Christ during this time to set ourselves apart to you for the year in preparation. God, do more in these 21 days. Accomplish more. We believe you to accomplish more than if we strive for the rest of the year in our own strength. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be right back with you tomorrow. God bless you.